Hi, good afternoon. It's uh, Neil Russell and Philip Roach. We're here in Nordhaven, Europe, uh, just uh, on our first ever web uh, interaction here with uh, any buyers that are out there or any owners uh, or anybody interested in Nordhaven's. Just let you all know that uh, Neil and I obviously work together, but because of COVID-19, we are still self-isolating. So um, Neil's in a, one of our satellite offices and um, I'm at home, to be honest. I don't have pictures normally of Nordhavens on the walls, but uh, oh, yes, we do. <laughs> we've just set this up to, so we can, we can, uh, we can talk together. Why do Nordhams retain their value? This uh, this is actually quite a good good um, question uh, in relation to this Nordham forty. And this Nordham forty, I can't remember what was the uh, price when it was first purchased uh, by the the, the 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 first owner, the first and only owner. Uh, but it's frankly, it's probably not a lot more than that, and uh, that we're listing it for. And I'm pretty confident that with the interest we're getting on the boat, that we're going to be uh you know doing very very well for the owner uh, and it, why is that well you know it, the number of factors um we have all our new builds are built in uh, us dollars uh so there is a fluctuation in the in in the exchange rate that does um uh, right, right now it's quite a major fluctuation uh, between the uh, sterling and and dollar but uh you know, depending on when you buy your vessel will depend on how well you do on the exchange rate whichever way it goes so that's one way but also yeah a discerning buyer which basically um, pretty much 10 out of 10 owners are they know what they're buying they've had it won't be their first, first boat in many cases it will be their maybe their second third fourth maybe their eighth boat tenth boat who knows so there are some sort of habitual boat buyers out there, which is fantastic. But it, you know, they they know what they're buying, and they know um, when they when they're buying a Nordhaven, and they're buying. A, they know that the engineer engineering's right, the systems are right, the carpentry's right, the you know, fiberglass, everything about the boat is tested, proven with millions of miles of cruise. Uh, cruising under the keels of these boats and and the knowledge and backup of you know whether it's the sales offices around the world and service centers around the world or PA at the head office down at Dana Point I mean the, the the resources are endless and you know whether it's Dan Streets taking a call from somebody who has a boat in Australia or whatever talking about a problem or they call me or Phil or whatever we're always here we're always on uh, standby so I, I think that um, uh, general feeling of um, support is uh, very important, but that combining with uh, with the engineering size, the, the quality um, of build, etc. And, and you know, I, I, the, the other thing, you know, people always sort of laugh at me when I say this. I, I, I'm a strong believer is in you should look at, dis at weights, displacement weights of of vessels so you know if you look at a uh, a Nordhaven 40 or a it, easiest one is a Nordhaven 76 you know there's a boat that weighs 130 to 140 tons okay heavy boat big boat you find a competitor uh that will weigh that amount I, actually i bet you can't find a competitor that weigh that amount it, it probably not over 100 tons i mean I think a Sunseeker 76, for example, they've obviously got a weight issue. They've got to keep it down to keep it fast. They're coming in at, I don't know, 48, 50 tons for a 76 footer. And there we are with a, you know, Nordhaven 76 in there at 130, 140 tons. You can, you're just buying a lot of material, buying a lot of boat, buying a lot of product. And that boat is put together beautifully well. And will sustain, and will will and won't fall apart. You look at you look at a yeah hull number one of the seventy six. I bet you every joint of that carpentry woodwork is is as good as it when it left the when it left the yard in uh, Taoshing. The, the, the quality is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, to sum it up, really, the boats don't wear out; they just keep going, and. Uh... 
Interesting enough, when uh, we last saw Dan, uh, Dan Street, President, um, Dan was talking about there's been a sort of renaissance with the, the older models, the 46s, 62s, where he described it as the skeleton of the boat, the hull, the rudders, the, uh, the, the structure of the boats are as good as it were with the boat they left the factory. What needs re replacing is, you know, things like pumps and wiring and things like that. But people are taking these projects on spending money obviously to to do them up but ending up with basically a brand new boat again um because of the build quality is so good and that certainly it helps brokerage uh it helps boats retain their value you know we're not we're not it's not our shelling peas with these you know the the production is uh is, is limited really um and because of that, we, the market's not flooded with 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 Nord right, and the, uh, the the dreamers as well. I don't think there's another uh, another brand out there with such a um, uh, a large following. I don't know how many dreamers we have, but it must be approaching four or five thousand, I suppose. Which is it's actually yeah, it was it was a, it was a Brit it was a, a British chap set set up the dreamers, um, and I'm sure some of you out there are probably probably actively involved with it. But Callum McCormick um, set it up some years ago, and as well as doing Nordhaven Dreamers, he did Sunseeker Dreamers. Now, Sunseeker, a, a, a very big British brand of fast planing powerboat. If you talk to a Brit about, if you mention to a Brit about uh, being working in the marine industry, they'll immediately say, "Do you work for Sunseeker? They're a they're a marketing phenomenon." Um, but he actually started up Sunseeker Dreamers at exactly the same time he did Nordhaven Dreamers. And got no response to it whatsoever. Um, the Nordhaven Dreamers took off because I think uh, the reasons reasons why there there are many, but it's the following is has been has been huge, and uh, I think it's it's something that we're, we'd be very active with. We now own PA now owns Nordhaven Dreamers. They run it themselves now, and uh, uh, I've done a really good job with it. And it's it's it introduces people to the boats. It introduces ideas. The Facebook site's great. There's lots of pictures of boats from all over the place, and it really gives you a feeling of just uh, is a is a worldwide love of this particular product. Yeah. The next question, uh, Phil, is uh, what percentage of North Harbour owners tend to move up and buy bigger models, or do they tend tend to be happy with their first purchase? Yeah, no, um, not enough. We want with a percentage <laughs> higher, please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's been, I mean, we've got Neil's sold three Nordhavens to the same same gentleman. Um, plenty of our, our our buyers have gone up in size. Some have come down in size, uh, just depending on what circumstances and what they want to do. So, yeah, there is. I think it's quite. We, we've had we've had people jump out of the Nordhaven brand, um, and quite a few sort of want to get back into it it's it's a it's a it's quite a i think it's quite a hard thing you kind of get spoilt a little bit um by owning a nordhaven and, and you know having something else um it really, it really doesn't cut the mustard um I've, I've i've had one 47 owner um who jumped out of his nordhaven um and got a got a, a different brand of boat just to do some he just put it's a pottering boat and he said, I said, how is it? It's a very nice boat, another American American design, trawler stylish type boat. Very few in Europe. Um, I can't mention the name. <laughs> but uh, he said, it's, it's a great boat until I turn the engines on. And he said the noise, the discomfort, all the rest of it. He just said he, just, he hates actually physically being out of the boat, but you know, we'll, we'll pull up with it just to be afloat. So I think, you know, it, it is a, it's, it's something that... Um, Neil, I've just been praising Neil for being able to sell multiple boats, but actually we've always had the policy of, of buy the right boat for you, uh, not the right boat you think you need at this this particular juncture. Um, and, you know, we, we have done it where I, I remember when I first joined, Neil telling me a, an anecdote about selling, selling a boat to a, a chap who, and Neil said to him, this isn't the right boat. You need a bigger Nordhaven. And I'm like, no, this will be fine. And then six months later, him phoning Neil up and chewing his head off because uh, he was right. He did need a bigger Nordhaven and ended up buying a bigger Nordhaven. But it's, you know, you get the right boat. With the, I think people are intimidated by the size, the sheer scale of the boats and think, well, I'll start small and then work my way up. But in all honesty, um, 
with what we could provide in terms of training and all the rest of it, you can jump into a big boat from, from day one. Um, in fact, handling the bigger boats is kind of easier than it is some of the smaller boats. So, you know, there's there's no disadvantage. I think, you know, it's 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 budget terms, all the rest of it. Um, you know, if, if, you've, if you've set your heart on a 55, don't be buying a 43 just to get used to a Nordhaven and then buy a 55. Jump straight into your 55 and, and enjoy it from, from the get-go. Yeah, well, there's no no advantage from starting on the small models to moving up. And, you know, you're not going to learn any, anything different. In fact, you, you'll probably find the larger models are possibly slightly easier. But, uh, no, just buy the first boat, the right boat the first time. <laughs>